let's see how we would actually analyze these data using JUM. I'll go forward to that one group blood pressure data set. Again, we've measured 100 individuals after a placebo and after the actual treatment. Now, to make it very clear that what we're really analyzing is the difference scores, let's go ahead and calculate a difference score column. If we make a new column and enter the following formula, we'll actually end up with a column of difference scores. Here, I've simply entered the formula treatment minus placebo. So, a positive value would indicate that the blood pressures were higher after the treatment, and a negative value would indicate that the blood pressures were lower after the treatment than the placebo. It turns out it doesn't matter which way we enter this, but make sure when you make your own difference score column, you keep track of what you entered. Now, we can actually treat this difference score column as if we're doing a one sample hypothesis test. Specifically, we can go to Analyze, select Distribution, and enter the difference score column as our Y column. When we click OK, we'll get a histogram of the difference scores we observed in our data set. Pause for a second and look at this histogram. Notice that most of the difference scores are less than zero. In fact, there's only one individual for whom the difference score was positive. That individual actually didn't get any relief relative to the placebo. But most individuals in the sample observed some reduction in their blood pressure taking the actual drug. In fact, if we look at the mean here, we can see that on average, individuals had a reduction of about 4.88 points of blood pressure. Now that we've seen the distribution, let's test this mean. Remember, we're testing this mean against a null hypothesis that the change was zero. So just like we did for the one sample hypothesis test, we can go to the red triangle and select test mean. If we select this option, we're given a hypothesized mean by default that is zero. In fact, this is what we want to use because in this study, the hypothesized mean difference in a population of difference scores is actually zero if the null hypothesis is true. Notice that we knew that before even doing the study. That's a consequence of how we structured this study. If there really is no effective treatment, the difference between before and after the drug, or after taking the placebo and after taking the drug, should be zero. Remember, that's because in our test statistic, mu sub d is if the null hypothesis is true, that is, if there is no effect. So when we click OK, we'll get the output testing our observed mean, negative 4.88, against the null hypothesis that the mean in the population is zero. Let's look at our output. We have our estimated standard error of the mean right here. This is that s sub x bar sub d, the estimate of the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of sample difference score means. Next, we have our observed test statistic. In this case, the sample mean difference, our x bar subscript d, divided by that standard error. We also have our degrees of freedom, which I told you before were 99, and our two-tailed p-value, in this case showing a statistically significant effect of the drug. In other words, it would be very unlikely if that population actually had a difference score mean of zero that we would observe the difference score mean that we got, negative 4.88. In other words, we can be confident that this effect is not due to simply sampling error.